What's up everyone? So today I'm going to give you a brief introduction to Reseta query. We are going to create a query to filter out unit tests from a Java test script using Reseta query. And in the process, I will cover following topics. We will install Reseta Playground. You will see what that is in a second. It's really helpful when you are working with Reseta related stuff. We'll be using language tree and syntax tree. We are also going to create a query using predicates and directives and you will see what captures and matches are. I will put the link to this presentation in the video description below if you want to check that out. First, let's install Reseta Playground. I'm using Packer Package Manager, so I'll be using this Lua snippet to install it. You can check out the GitHub repo for more information about Playground. If you want to add more configurations or if you want to check how to install it using a different package manager, then you can visit the playground uh, repo. I have the presentation opened in the browser as well. So I'll copy the snippet and paste it into my configuration. Let me format the code. Next, we need to resource the configuration. I'll just close and reopen. To install, I will run packer install. Once that's done, make sure to run packer compile. Okay, now let's see whether we installed the plugin successfully or not. I'll open up a Lua file. I can run TS Playground toggle. And to my right hand side, I have a new window which contains the visual representation of the syntax tree. You can click on the nodes and it will highlight the relevant text in the text editor. Next, we have language tree and syntax tree. It's super easy to get the language tree. You can call get parser and pass in the buffer number. It will return the language tree, which you can use to pass a new syntax tree. We're going to get the root node from the syntax tree and the query will be evaluated against the root node. All right, so before I started recording, I created a simple Java test script. I'll open that. By the way, you will find these files in the same link as of this presentation. Now I will open playground again, TS playground toggle, and let's see what's in there. We have a class declaration, which contains the entire class. And we have method declaration nodes. We have three nodes for three methods in the class. It contains the entire method, including the annotations. Okay, now let's jump right into the implementation. To write Lua scripts, I'm going to create a Lua file right next to the Java file. Let's call it run.lua. And I'm going to open that file in this window. Now let's create a key map to resource run.lua file in map. Comma w is the key bind. Then I'm going to call Lua file run.lua and let's hit enter using CR. Just to check, I'll add a print statement like so. Then let's hit comma W and we got the console output. So it's working. Now we will be printing stuff quite frequently throughout the video. So let's create a function to print values. Function, I'll call this I and I'm going to get value and let's print the value. Now, if you pass in a table to Lua default print function, it will only print the address of the table. So we can't see what's in the table, but nothing to worry. Miobim developers got us covered. There is a function called vim inspect, which returns a predefined string for a given uh, Lua table. So let's call vim inspect and pass in the value. I will make this function a local function like so. Then to get the language tree, I need the buffer number. So I'll switch to the test script window. Then I'm going to run echo buff nr. The buffer number is four. So I'll store that in a local variable. Local buff nr is four. After that, I'm going to call get parser function to get the language tree. So let's create a local variable to store the language tree. Then let's call vim tree sitter get 
parser let's go to the help page to see what what are the parameters we, we are supposed to pass in get parser so it's taking the buffer number and the language let's pass in the buff nr and language is java let's print the values to see what's in there i language tree and we have multiple functions available we have the pass function and there is lang function if you want to check the language just to show you i'll call lang and it will print java okay now let's get the syntax tree by passing the language tree local syntax tree then let's access language tree and call parse once again let's print the syntax tree we have an array or a table i'm going to get the first index or the first element so when you get something like this something called user data you can pass it into a function called get meta table and print the value like so and we have three functions copy edit and root as i said we are going to store the root node so let's create a local variable root and access syntax tree get the first element then i'm going to call root to get the root node next we are going to create the query if you want to check the help page for any of these topics you can use these commands and if you want to learn more about queries or query syntax you can check this document out i'll put the link in the description so we are going to use pass query to get a new query and we are going to evaluate that query against the root node by default the iterator is not going to return any matches for that we need to create a capture so we have a capture created called method then we need to filter the methods with test annotation so we are going to use predicate to do that like so then to get the node text i'll be using query module it would be nice to get the line number as well as the node text or the method name so we are going to use offset directive to do that okay now let's jump back into the code i'm going to create a local variable to store the query then let's call vim resitter pass query let's check the help page so it's expecting the language and the query string so let's pass in the language java then the query string let's create the query string once again if you want to learn more about query syntax you can check this documentation out but let's start with something simple i'll jump into the playground window so we have a method declaration here i'm going to create a query to match these nodes you know method declaration nodes we have three methods so it will match three nodes okay let's jump back into this so when we are defining a query we need to put all the nodes inside parentheses so i'll create parentheses and paste in method declaration next we are going to evaluate so i'll create a for loop first we are going to get the id which i'm not going to use so i'll add underscore next we will receive the captures so captures then after that we are going to get metadata then let's call the iterator or let's get the iterator using the query let's call help on iter matches so we are going to have to pass node and the source the start and stop is not mandatory or optional so let's pass in node and source node is the root 
and the source is the buffer number. You can also pass in the text of the buffer as well but why worry when we can pass the buffer number. So let's loop and print out the captures. Now I'm going to run. So as you can see we have three empty tables for three methods. Why did it not pass in the node? Because we did not create a capture. So I'm going to define a capture at, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it method and save and run again. Now we have user data object, which is the node. So in the script, we have two test methods, these two, but there is one that is not a test method because it's not annotated using test so obviously we need to filter out test methods from the rest. To do that, we are going to use predicate. But before that, let's advance the query to capture the annotation identifier. I'll remove the method capture for now. Let's jump to the playground. So as you can see, we have method modifiers inside method declaration. Again, inside that we have the marker annotation and we have the name identifier. So let's capture one by one. I'll first capture modifiers. It's a node, so we have to put that inside parentheses modifier. Because the modifier node is inside the method declaration, I'm going to wrap it around the method method declaration parentheses. So once again, we have marker annotation inside modifiers. Again, inside modifiers, I'm going to create new parentheses and paste marker annotation. Lastly, we have name identifier. Name is not a node. So I'm going to just cut identifier and create parentheses and paste in the identifier like so. Let's break this into multiple lines. So it's a little bit easy to understand that way. Oops. So like I said, we need to add a capture. So I'll call this annotation. Okay, there's an error. I made a mistake. This should be modifiers. Let's save and run it again. So we still get three nodes. We need to filter out the tests. So to do that, I'll use predicate. Let's run or go to the help page of three seater predicate. Do a three seater predicate. So there are multiple ways to filter out or add conditions. I'm going to use EQ, but there are other ways to add conditions. For example, you can add um, patterns, Lua patterns or Vim patterns. Okay, let's go back and let's add a, a condition. I'm going to use hash EQ question mark. That's the syntax. Then I'm going to add the capture annotation. Then the condition should be or annotation should be equal to test. Now save and execute. This time we only got two matches. Okay, now I need to figure out a way to get the method name. Let's go back to the playground. So as you can see inside method declaration, let me actually close the file menu. Inside the method declaration, we have the name identifier which represents the method name right here as you can see it's highlighted it's directly inside method declaration so i'm going to define that identify node directly inside method declaration okay now directly inside method declaration we have the name identifier let's put it inside parentheses now previously we ended the uh, method declaration closing bracket here 
so I'm going to cut that and paste it down below and let's run it again and make sure it's working okay to get the text I'm going to add another capture let's call this method now when you run the file now you can see you have two captures or two nodes we have two total matches because we have two total methods but within a match we have two captures because we have the annotation capture and method capture now I'm going to get the node text using get node text method first let's import the query I'm going to create a local variable called Q and I'm going to require vim tree sitter query module and let's call q get node text once again let's go to the help page get node text so it's expecting a node and a source let's pass in the node capture the second element because that's the second capture the method then we're going to pass in the source the buffer number now save and run we have test method 1 and test method 2 retrieved from that node so as you can see in the test script we have test method 2 and 1 there is one last thing that is to get the line number so let's use directives to get the line number I'll go to the help page help lua tree sitter directives and I'm going to use offset directive like so let's paste it inside parentheses and the capture is method and to access the offset I'm going to access metadata now let's run it so as you can see we have the test method one node starting from line number 9 and column number 16 it will end in the same line line number 9 and the column number 27 likewise we have the offset for test method 2 as well down here there you go we got the method name and the line number now you can use this information to good use like feeding them into telescope and show a menu when you hit enter you can jump to that particular method so for people who want to learn more I'll link the NeoVim doc for TreeSitter alongside the link to this presentation as well as the code I have written here so that's pretty much it thanks for watching have a nice day